everybody, and welcome to 2024 Spring Fling. Can you believe it is already, like, April, and it's 2024? Time flies when you're having fun. So today, I'm going to share with you my project. And as you know, we had the option of choosing fire, water, earth, or air. Well, I guess I could have chosen all of them, but that would have been a bit overwhelming. So, I chose fire. Why did I choose fire? Red is my favorite color. I love working with red. So I did a little research on fire, and you know what? There's not a whole lot of red in fire. And the color of fire is dependent upon what makes up the fire and how hot the fire is. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Well, now you do. So, quilting and a lesson in science. I stuck with fire, even though maybe it doesn't always have a lot of red, and I decided that I was going to use a flame. Let me show you. So here is one of my flames, and I've got it upside down because the pieces are still not together. And do you know how I cut this flame out? By using my Cricut Maker. So let me show you really quickly how the Maker cuts my fabric for me. I have chosen this, which is an ombre that goes from yellow to orange to purple. Let's take our True Cut ruler and rotary cutter and get this fabric that I'm going to use for flaming flowers cut out for the Cricut. Beautiful. I love my True Cut rotary cutter. It has a lip on it and it allows you to attach to your ruler so you cannot move your rotary blade any other way than straight. And it cuts beautifully every time. I have put on my Cricut Maker the flame design that I want on my project. So what I'm going to do is load my fabric onto my mat. I should have cut my fabric at 12 inches and I cut it at 10. So I need to rearrange some of the designs. The Cricut Maker cuts fabric beautifully. Now there are all kinds of cutting machines out there that cut fabric. So this is not the only one. This just happens to be my favorite. And I think the thing that makes it stand out is that it uses a rotary blade. And that enables it to cut fabric without any stabilizer on it, face up, and cut it beautifully. All right, so I have to go to my mat. I've got a 12 inch by 24 inch mat here. All right, so that looks good to me. And you can feed your mat in either way. So I could start with the purple color or I could start with the orange color. Now it just so happens I'm going to start with the orange color. So here my button is flashing, so I'm gonna load. So here, I peel up my fabric, make sure nothing's sticking, and I have flaming flowers. Now, once I cut out my flames that were orange and yellow and red, 
I thought, you know what? My research showed me that there can be blue flames, purple flames, all different color flames. So I thought, I'm gonna cut out some flames that are different colors. And instead of using my flames as flames, they're going to be flowers. Now I needed a background. And the background that I chose, and you know, it was kind of hard when you're using a bunch of different colors to find just the right background. And it ended up that this Tula Pink True Colors worked out beautifully. Let me zoom in on it a little bit because it's hard to see all the details from far away. So you can see that there are different colors within a hexagon shape. So when I put my flaming flower on, it looks great. And because there are all these different colors in the background, I can use all the different colors of flaming flowers that I like. Now, I can't just use this piece of fabric, right? I need a quilt. So before I add my flowers, I need to find a border to go around my fabric. So this is going to be the centerpiece of my quilt and we're going to applique those flowers on. And I'm going to show you how to applique those flowers on. But first, let's get a border on this. My first thought was to use the same colors that I'm going to use for my flaming flowers for the border. This of course was before I decided I wanted my flowers to be more colorful. So I put the border next to my focus and I thought I would alternate. But that just didn't, I don't know. It may have worked, but it just, it wasn't the look that I was going for. So I went back to my stash and what do you know? I found some more Tula Pink fabric. And look what this has on it. A sewing machine. What would be more appropriate than a sewing machine? So I held this up and I thought it was perfect. Now, I continued to look in my stash because you know, this may be perfect, but there might be something that's more perfect. I found that I had the same fabric, but in a different colorway. And I thought, let's try this. My borders can be bigger. And I do like it, but I think I like the other border more. Don't know why, just for some reason, I do. So I believe I'm going to stick with this border. Let's get those flowers cut and get this guy ready to put on the Cunique 16X. I am cutting the borders for my quilt. And this fabric is a directional fabric. And if you're not familiar with what directional means, it means that all of the images are facing the same way. Another type of fabric would be called a toss, and that's one where these sewing machines would just be situated in all different ways, so it wouldn't matter if you use the fabric in the normal way you would use it, like you cut, you fold it up, and you have it salvage to salvage, right? Here are your two selvages. Now, when you cut this way, <laughs> that was pretty dang crooked. <laughs> when you cut this way, what you're going to end up with is this. Okay, so your sewing machine, which for some reason I cut off, is facing this way. The name of this fabric is Tula Pink Petal to the Metal. Love it. Now, let me show you why this can be a challenge. 
So here are the first two strips that I cut from my fabric and this is selvage to selvage. So if I were to put this right here my sewing machine is facing that way. Now it's up to you. That may be perfectly fine for you. And normally it wouldn't really bother me, but for some reason, for this particular quilt, I want my sewing machines to be facing top side up, bottom side down. So these work perfectly on the top and the bottom. So that's where I'll use them. Now, let's go back to the cutting table and figure out what we're going to do with our sides. And before we go, let me explain why it's a little more tricky. I'm going to use this as an example. This is fabric that's width of fabric. So it's four inches by the width of the fabric. The width of the fabric is from your selvage end to your selvage end. I always consider it 40 inches. You can get 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Usually 44 is the most you're going to get. When I do my calculations, I assume it's 40 and that way I am erring on the side of caution. So when I measure this side and that side and the top and the bottom of my center piece, I can determine how many 40 inch strips I need. So this was selvage to selvage. I am going to consider it, because I am erring on the side of caution the opposite way, that this is 44. So I'm going to add this side to this side and that gives me 88. Now, I bought one yard of fabric. That's 36 inches. I'm going to make the assumption that this is 36 inches. So when I add this side and this side, that is 72. And 72 and 88 is, I have no idea. So I need to get out my calculator or I can just round up. 72 is 80 and 88 is 90 and 80 and 90 is 170. I need 170 inches of a border. Doesn't matter how wide it is. I just know that I need 170 inches in order to cover this whole area or actually around this whole area. In this case, I will add my bottom border and my top border first. And that is going to extend the length that I need. Okay, after saying all that, let me get back to why when you have a directional fabric and you want to use it on your borders, it's a little more tricky because you don't know that you have a 40 inch strip. So instead of cutting my fabric from selvage to selvage, I will be cutting my fabric from top to bottom. And if you look, that is not anywhere near 40 inches. So I need to measure this distance here and then figure out exactly what my sides are going to be in order to figure out how many of these strips I need. And I hope I get lucky because I've already set my width of my borders to four inches. I think I'll be okay, but let's find out. I have measured the length of my centerpiece from 
top to bottom with the borders. And I came up with 50 and three quarters. And that rhymes, ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Now, let's measure how much fabric we have this way. So I'm going to fold it up just like I would any other time. And I'm actually going to cut the selvage off first. But essentially, I have two times the length from here to here. So let's measure from here to here. And that is 13 and a half, approximately. So if I take 51 and I divide it by 13 and a half, I gotta go get my calculator. Okay, 51 divided by 13.5. I get 3.777. That means I need four of these strips in order to cover all that area. So, let's start cutting. I have already set my border at four inches. So let's get rid of the selvage. And I can, okay, so I need a four inch border. So I'm going to measure four inches from this side. There's one, two, three, four. Now I will take these strips I will sew them together. Since I have four, I will do two and two, and I will add the top and the bottom, and I'll be back with a quilt that's ready to add applique. And I'm going to show you how I prefuse my applique with a common household item. Tiny miscalculation on my part. I actually had way more strips because I forgot to double that 13 and a half inches to be 27 inches. So, I have lots of Tula Pink fabric strips left for another project. Okay, we are making progress. We have our center, we have our border. Now, we are going to place our flaming flowers. So, fortunately, fabric is pretty clingy. So, the flaming flowers kind of stick to themselves. And I'm just going to kind of place them. I have, I believe, five. So, There's two. And we'll do one like this. And our last one, kind of put this way. So there we have our flaming flowers. Kind of cool. 
Now we can't just leave them like that when we go to put this thing on the long arm because they will fall off. So I have found a simple household item that makes it easy to tack down your applique before you get started sewing. Want to guess what it is? If you guessed Elmer's washable school glue, you were right. And I'm sure you don't have to use Elmer's. As long as it's washable, once you wash your project, the glue will be gone. But until you wash your project, it will stick. Another reason that I like to use glue, especially for this project, instead of using uh, some sort of wonder under or a stabilizer that actually adheres to the back of your fabric, I want the edges of my flaming flowers to fray and it'll give the quilt more interest. So let's start gluing. I am going to just put enough glue to hold this down so I can carry my project to my long arm. Be careful. It might be better to sit down and do this, but for now, I'm going to do it this way. And it doesn't take a lot of glue. Just some strategically placed glue should hold your project down just enough for you to sew it in place. And there you go. That flower is stuck down and I can take my project to my 16X and it's gonna stay there until I tack it down. Let me glue the rest of my flowers down and I'll be back and show you the backing that I've chosen. And then I'm going to show you how to load the backing and the quilt onto my Q-Zone frame. I couldn't stand it. I needed some extra flaming flowers. So I cut them out on my maker out of some really cute ombre fabric. I cut them out of some really cute ombre fabric. So I didn't have to worry about cutting separate mats. I just positioned my flaming flowers on the color I wanted them. So I have some variation and I think these, they just add a little extra touch. I'm really happy with the way they look. And I'll do a little close up so that you can see them. I know from this distance, it's hard to see, especially the background. So if I zoom in, there you get a better idea of this hexagon background and what the flames look like on it. All right. We have our flowers glued on. We have our borders added. Now, all we need to do is add our backing. And then of course, get to that Cunique 16 X and have a whole lot of fun with the long arming. So I will be back with how to load the Q-Zone Queen frame, the backing that I'm going to use for this quilt, and I will show you how I tack those flowers down and make them look even more fabulous. I found the perfect backing for this project. You all are probably gonna think I'm crazy. I don't even remember where I found this, but I found it on clearance and I had to have it because it's adorable. Now this is a little different than I normally do my quilts. I made a quilt for Christmas 
And instead of using your traditional batting and cotton backing, I put fleece on the back of the quilt. And I liked the way it looked, looked great, but I wasn't sure, you know, what other people would think about it. It's quite unconventional. My daughter loves it. Whenever she comes over, that's the quilt she grabs. I didn't put any batting. I just put the quilt top and fleece. So she thinks that is the perfect amount of quilt, of cover, to keep you warm, but not too warm. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put fleece on it. Now this fleece is very special. How cute is that? Do you see those butterflies and the pink? Tula would be so proud. And it fits perfectly. It's actually a little longer than what I need, which is great. Now, I don't know if I will be able to roll this over and use this for my binding, but we're definitely going to find out. So, let's take this to the Cunique 16X. You are going to want to stay tuned for part three of this flaming flower quilt, because next up, I'm going to show you how I use the Cunique 16X to quilt it. So I'll see you in a little while. Here I am at my Q-Zone Queen frame. And as you can see, there is this piping that is used to load the frame. Now I just hung this over while I was getting everything ready. So let me put this to the side. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to load our backing. And we are going to load it from selvage to selvage. Now this is stretchy. So actually, we may actually load it with the selvages on the side. And that way, we won't get as much stretch. Now this is where we have some fun. So I'm draping this over the front bar. Woo, and it is slick. So of course that makes it a little challenging. What I like to do is I have these bar magnets that I've gotten from the hardware store. And in order to make it easier on me to load the frame by myself, I like to put the magnet on the bar. Let me get my other magnet. And that keeps the backing from slipping when I am installing the piping. Or, I don't know if that's really the technical term for it, but that's what I'm gonna call it. Now you know that this isn't cut straight, so our goal is to load this as straight as possible. Here is a tool that helps me load. So it's a little roller and it pushes the piping in because it's got this little piece that sticks out. So essentially it rolls and pushes the piping in. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about.
So we have that done. So now that we have the back set up, I'm going to let my quilt top float. I am ready to put my quilt on top of my backing. So here. Going to lay it down. Now I'm going to place these on the front. So I lock my fabric in place so that I don't have any slipping. Okay. Now we're gonna get started with our long arm. I have got a variegated thread. It's a finesse thread. And I think it will blend in nicely. I want to put clicks or clamps on the edges so that it will hold the edges taut. The first thing that I want to do is I want to baste my quilt. Okay, and here we go with a basting stitch. Let me put my needle down, bring my needle up, and then let's baste. So now what we wanna do is we wanna get started with our quilting. So I have to make a decision as to how I want to quilt the edges. And I think I'm just going to do a loop-de-loop. -loop. So let's do that. So I'll quilt the edge and then the background I'm going to do just a smaller meander so that it catches less attention than my flaming flowers. Now I've done my border. Now I'm going to move on to the center part of the quilt and then also starting to tack down my flaming flowers. Now here I just want to do a small meander. So I'm just going to outline my flame. I'm not going to make it all the way to the top, but that's okay. I can just do an outline. Now if I wanted to do a different kind of stitch I could do that too. But all I wanted to do was just a regular outline and then these edges can fray. So I want you to see how I do this whole flower. The lighting is hard to get. The backing I think I originally referred to as fleece. This is not fleece. This is 
it's not even minky, I don't think, but it's along the lines of minky. So fleece is not going to stretch like this has stretched. And that is something that you just learn to work with. And here is the quilt, quilted. I like it. And here is the back. So let's take this to the cutting table and figure out what's next. I have decided that I am going to cut about an inch of the backing away from the edge of the front of the quilt. And that is what I'm going to use for my binding. So I'm using my True Cut rotary cutter and ruler and I am cutting. Now I'm trying to be careful not to stretch this too much. And I'm just, like I said, measuring an inch away from the edge of the fabric because I really, I don't want to cover up any more of the design than that. So, that should work well. I have one more side to cut and then I will show you how I do the corners when I bring the bind or the backing from the back to the front. It's a pretty nifty technique. So if I were to just leave this corner like this and fold it over and fold it over again. I've got this big bunch. So what I'm going to do is get my little ruler. Okay, so you find your 45 degree line on your ruler and you line it up along one side of the quilt, the quilt front. And you cut your fabric. So then, when you fold it over, you match these two together. And you have your corner. And I like to clip that My quilt is complete. There's the front and here's the back. I can't wait to cuddle up with it on my sofa. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the spring fling and have a great day. Eat some chocolate 
and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye.